I call this the lazy key shot method. Not because it's the fastest, but because it cuts a lot of corners while still producing pretty good results. It's more flexible and convincing than just using, say, a backplate, but it's also a lot faster and simpler than going the full 3D route with custom HDRIs and everything like that. So today, I think it's time that I show you my lazy key shot workflow. Is it perfect? No. Are the results good? Eh, they're good enough. Is it fast? Eh, sorta. Is it easy? Yeah, you betcha. So here's a photo I took with my iPhone, and here's the rendering I made the lazy way. Now, I'm gonna walk you through my process. To download project files from this video, enter your email address in the form at the top of my website and click Submit. You should be passed on to the file vault then. Bookmark it any time to come back for more project files. My goal was to recreate a photo using my lazy key shot method. I wanted a neat little bottle in a realistic looking environment with some dramatic backlighting. This is what I landed on. I began by taking some pictures of the bottle as my subject, then the setting without the bottle, and finally a top-down photo of the marble countertop. Next, I modeled the bottle since it's usually faster to create what I need than to find exactly what I'm looking for online. I did this using Fusion 360, not SaladWorks. I made a knockoff ESOP label for the bottle using Adobe Illustrator and exported it as a PNG. Next, I imported the bottle into Keyshot and applied the glass, liquid, and plastic materials as well as the label. Using the geometry view, I scaled and moved some ground planes into position to act as the marble countertop and the kitchen backdrop. Then I applied the pictures of the countertop and the kitchen to the corresponding planes. The marble plane was set to a plastic material type and the backdrop plane to an emissive material so it would reflect the countertop. I added my photo reference as a front plate in the image styles tab and toggled it on and off to help me frame up the shot. To add extra light to the scene, I duplicated the kitchen backdrop plane. After scaling it down and repositioning it over the window and adjusting the kitchen texture on it, I set it to an area light material. I made the plane invisible to the camera so as to not interfere with the window behind it. The rest of the lighting was coming from a generic procedural studio HDRI within Keyshot. At this point, I took a moment to refine the plastic bottle and liquid materials to closer match the reference photo. Next, I set up some strong depth of field and made some color adjustments to the kitchen backdrop using a color adjust node in the material graph since it felt too warm and dark for my liking. Finally, I spent some time in the image adjustments tab to do some tone mapping and make some final adjustments to the brightness, contrast, and color to the overall image. I also added some bloom for that glowy effect. The last step was to take the image into Photoshop and add some lens distortion that occurs in photos but Keyshot does not add. I used the camera raw filter to make some adjustments to specific color and value ranges and to add a bit of grain. Finally, a stylized light leak or lens flare was added at the top since it was present in my reference image. And there you go. Hopefully you learned a new approach to take for in-context renderings. Have fun and get creative by making small sets at your house and then using photography to take some shortcuts. If I can ask you one favor after this, it's to share this video somewhere else. Post it on social media so others can see it too. And until next time guys, happy rendering.